Hello everyone, my name is Connor Hoffman, and welcome back to the How to Build. It's been a while, hasn't it? Today we'll be once again taking a look at Helrix, the leader of the Order, as well as additionally the Crimson Wave version of Helrix this time. Helrix was originally my third How to Build I've ever made, so she's been updated quite a bit since her last tutorial. Just as a reminder, if you weren't aware, there's a contest going on over on the TTV message boards to decide what the canon appearance of Helrix is going to be in G1. So if you're a fan of my version of Helrix, you can go on down to the link in the description and cast your vote for option 4, and hopefully this mock will have a chance of becoming Helrix's canon appearance. Just as an added FYI, we'll need to make it to at least third place if we want to move on to the next poll. So don't hesitate if you want to see this become the canon version of Helrix. Alright, without further ado, let's get on with the mock, starting with the legs. Alrighty, so starting with the legs, these are the parts you'll need. As usual, pause the video here on this frame and uh, gather up everything you see here. Build the uh, smaller constructions if you can figure them out, and anything that's too complicated to uh, build just by looking at it, I will explain as we go through it. So uh, starting with the foot, we'll just start with a simple dark blue uh, metro foot, add in a hand connector on the axle. Then on either side of that hand connector, we're gonna add this greebling here, these little Wolverine claw pieces. Okay, and you can set that down. Uh, we've got this Technic connector here with two, two long axles, uh, pins actually, and a jumper plate on top for a little bit of color and uh, filler. So I'll just stick that in the back of the foot there, and that's all you need to do for the foot. For the lower leg, you'll start with this Inaika uh, lower leg, and just stick a half uh, rubber tire over that side. Take a three long pin, and on the top pole, stick that in, uh, I believe stick that in this way, so that the little stopper is on the inside. And then you're going to build this construction out of system slopes and a plate and just stick that by that hole right there on the inside of the leg just like so it rounds out the back real nicely and then set that down for the armor on the front of the leg you're going to need another metro foot with two stud pins on either side um, then you're going to need this construction out of uh, thin two wide uh, axle hole lift arms or as i like to call them very useful pieces Stick that onto the axle hole with that um, angle one Technic connector on the back and then stick a three long pin on the inside going all the way through, just like that. Then on these two uh, stud pins, you're gonna take a one by two cheese slope in dark blue, put it on either side just like that. And then on the inside, you're gonna take two of these robot claw pieces and some of these uh, like wide spike pieces and stick them on like so so that they're at this angle, just like that. Stick that on either side. It's okay if they're a little loose because as soon as you go and stick this pin in the bottom hole of this um, Anika leg piece, the uh, robot claw will keep them from moving. So that's how you build the lower leg. Set that down. Then the upper leg is the same as it's always been. We just need this double double pin connector with a uh, ball joint on it. These, uh, Technic connectors put together like that with the hand connector. Stick one on either side, just like that. On the top half, whichever side you decide to be the top half, just stick a slicer foot over the back. And then over the front, stick a size five silver uh, Euro factory shell. And uh, obviously I added a, a bit more detail there. Then you can snap the leg all together. Just like so. And now for the colors of the Crimson Wave version, we, you can see I've replaced all the Mata Blue from the design with either dark blue or dark red. So just take a good look at the colors you see here. All right, and these are not mirrored, so you can build them exactly the same way, and you'll need two of each, if you're building both versions, that is, but most likely you won't be. All right, moving on, we will do the arms. All right, now for the arms, these are the parts you'll need. Starting with the hand, you'll just need this uh, hand connector with a little connector on the, uh, Technic connector on the bottom. Stick a tap on one side with a uh, Exoforce arm on that, and then attach to a 1x2 handlebar modified plate and a 1x2 plate here. You're going to attach a robot claw and two of these robot arms with a couple little barbs on the end. Stick that on the outside of the hand connector and make sure those studs go into the indents on the uh, on the hand connector 
right there. That's how you build the hands. Next, for the upper arm, you're going to need one of these size uh, CCBS bones with a little half tire shoved over one of those ball joints. You're going to need a size 5 armor shell with a 1x2 handlebar uh, modified plate, as well as this curved slope piece. Stick that onto a stud pin on the hole in the uh, um, CCBS limb, and then stick that shell on the middle ball joint. And that's for the that's her upper arm pretty simple now for her lower arm completely new design onto this version of Helrix. Uh, to start we're gonna take this uh, Vampra silver armor piece and we're gonna stick that onto uh, one of these um, lift arm connectors with a axle and a pinhole connection on it we're gonna stick a three long axle on the side of that with a stud on the on one side set that down you're also gonna need these two plate pieces and uh, one of these upside down 1x2 slope pieces. Put a Lego stud on, on the out underside of that one. And then you're also going to need this five long axle with a stopper on the end, two pass-through ball joints, one of these Technic connectors, and this half-sized gear and a washer. I'm going to stick that together with this piece just like so by taking these uh, plate pieces. And on one side you're going to take uh, on the uh, round holes you're going to attach the studs from those plates on just like so. And on the other side you're going to do the same thing, just like that. It's a fairly tight connection, nice and smooth as well. Set that down. Next you'll take this uh, this style hand connector right here and a uh, one of these slicer foot armor pieces. Slide that onto one side, then uh, on the center hole of this slicer foot. You're going to slide one of these toe ball uh, lightsaber rod pieces and attach that on the other side with a bow rock eye, just like so. Then on the other side of the hand connector, you're going to take a new Bannock T piece, one of these uh, very useful pieces, and a uh, tap piece as well. I'm going to stick that right here, just about like so, on that side, and bend it in that, like that. And then lastly, on this final hole in the slicer foot, you're going to take a two long axle. And then on the other side of the washer side, you're going to stick a thin lift arm, just like that. And then you're going to attach these together onto that hand connector and onto that uh, axle right there. And I like to shove everything down a little bit so there's a little bit of extra play in the, uh, the wrist design. Shove that forward a little bit and Make sure this is pressed up as tight as it can against the uh, the whole construction. And then lastly, take this size 4 armor shell, add one of these greebles on the top of it, and then at a slight angle, you're going to connect it just like so onto the uh, the middle ball joint. That's how you build Helix's lower arm, snapping it all together like so. And the entire arm design, hand, lower arm, and upper arm are mirrored, so you'll need to do that if you want to get both sides. And then for the colors on the Crimson Wave version, you'll just once again replace all the Metro, or sorry, Mata Blue with either Metro Blue or Dark Red, and as much silver as you can with either Metro Blue or Dark Red, or just Dark Red in this case. Um, this piece, uh, since these pieces are kind of rare, I swapped one out with silver. I'd like to swap that out with the Dark Blue one once I get more, but that's uh, what I'm using for now as a placeholder, and then obviously we'll need both arms for both versions of Helrix. Alright, now moving on, we'll handle the waist next. Alright, now for the waist, these are the parts you'll need. Uh, to start with, we'll take this uh, Mushroom Blue Vaki waist piece, slide a two long pin, one long axle on into the front right there, and then in front of that you're going to take this Technic connector, attach it, attach these greebles together, and stick that in the front just like so. So that faces outwards just like that. Then you're going to set that down. Next you're going to take this um, Metro chest plate piece, stick a blue pin in the front, and then line that up so that that blue pin goes through that, through the top half of that Technic connector like so. And you're going to take a hand connector. I have a one of those uh, little pin hole or little pin peg studs on the side like so there just for a bit of filler stick that onto that half length blue pin sticking out the front right there and then next you're going to take these two 
three long axles with a stud on the end. Put a flat round uh, plate on the front of that. Slide that through the two holes on either side of the Metru waist, or sorry, Metru torso piece, and then cap them off on the back with a pair of washers. Then you can set that down. Next, you're gonna need this Vampra armor piece again with a little greeble on the, uh, on the pin hole there. And you're gonna need this Technic connector with a three long pin. Stick that in just like so, so that the uh, axle holes line up and then stick that four long axle all the way through so it sticks out a half length on either side. Then lining up these pin holes together, stick those into the back, just like that. Let's see where we're going with this. Um, next, you're gonna take these thin lift arms, a robot claw, and a Borak eye piece, and then stick that on the side of that half length axle sticking out the back, and do that again with the other side. Just like so, have the Borak eyes sticking straight up pretty much from there. And then last for her waist cape slash fin thing pieces, you're gonna need two three long axles with a stopper on the end without a stud, and uh, two of these rubber two long uh, kind of lift arm pieces, I don't really know what else you would call them. Uh, before you stick those in to that center hole there, stick them onto the inside of these Kino armor pieces, which have blue pins and uh, Borak eyes on the inside, just like so. Do that for both of them. And then on that, uh, on this hole right here in the side of the Vaki waist, you're gonna stick that there and make sure it sits just behind that um, robot claw piece. Do that again for the other side. And that is how you build Helrix's waist. For the uh, Crimson Wave version, these are the uh, colors you'll want to use. I've also used some frictionless pins here because they're uh, gray instead of being mod blue. So yeah, and then replace those with silver on the inside instead of uh, instead of dark red. But yep, that's how you build the waist. Moving on, we'll start with the torso. All right, starting with the torso, we'll be doing this in sections as usual to uh, make things easier to uh, explain. So to start with, you'll need this Hero Factory shield piece. Um, stick a Borak eye with a two long axle on that hole on the top, and then use one of these connectors right here to just fill in that gap behind it. Uh, next, we're gonna take two of these two long pins with a hub on the end, stick those on the inside, like so. Just like that. And then you're gonna need this uh, this style Technic connector with two bulwark eyes on either side, just like that. Snap that there to fill in the inside, just like so. And then lastly, we're gonna need, for the wing connection, we're gonna need two gear pieces and two four long axles with a stopper on the end. You can shorten those if you don't wanna use the wings or just completely take those off entirely. And uh, the uh, axles have to be this long on the back in order to connect the shield later, which I will show you. Um, but you could also shorten those if you don't want to uh, use that feature. Um, for the other color scheme, you basically just use dark red Borak eyes instead of Mata blue ones. And moving on. All right, now for the main bulk of the torso, these are the parts you'll need. Uh, to start with, we'll just take this double socket CCBS bone, stick a Metru limb on either side of it. And then once again, we'll just angle these up just slightly for now. Next up, you're gonna need these two different length uh, axles with a stopper on the end, one four long, one five long. We're gonna stick one through the top hole on the inside of this leg here, and then stick a one of these style uh, Technic lift arms on the inside, just like so. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side with the shorter axle, and do the same thing, only this time we're gonna have a four long uh, lightsaber rod on the inside. Just stick that on the inside like so. It's a little tight because the lightsaber rod's in there. And as you can see, we'll be putting those together in a second. Next, for this part, you're just going to need these uh, new style um, Technic connectors here with the axles and a thin lift arm on the front, and then attach that using a three long pin onto a uh, Glatorian neck piece. And then I just have a full size tire looped over that. And then that can just stick to the end of that um, axle sticking out. And then you'll just want to put those together connecting it via the, uh, the lightsaber rod in the middle. Then for the uh, shoulder armor, you're just gonna take two hand connectors, and then on either side of those, I have more of those greeble pieces. Lay those down flat, and then on the end connector, just attach two 
Nuva armor pieces, shoulder armor pieces. And that's the main bulk of the torso for the uh, Crimson Wave version. These are the colors you ne you'll need. And moving on. All right, this next section is the majority of the Technic in this build. Uh, just a quick heads up, this section here is just connected with the three long pin in the middle. And uh, this piece here is another one of these fancy style Technic connectors with a uh, two long axle, three, uh, one long pin. Sorry, a one long pin, one long axle, two long pin. Gosh, that's confusing. Okay, so starting with this piece, we're just gonna take a jumper plate and stick that on the back, just like so. Then we're gonna need this five long lift arm here with a stud pin on the middle, and then stick that to the little peg in the center of the uh, jumper plate, just like that. And that's gonna be a little loose for now. Don't worry about that. Uh, next up, we'll go ahead and connect this Technic connector with these two three long axles through the holes on the bottom of this construction here, just like so. So you got, so you're looking at that. Then next you're gonna take this three long ax, or sorry, three long lift arm here, a blue pin, and two of these barb pieces on the inside, and one of these Metro armor pieces. And just stick that onto the blue pin, just like so. And then you're gonna bend this back slightly, and then stick that blue pin onto this connector, just like that. And then push it back forward so that the like little nub on the side of the um, side of the Metro armor is uh, just on the inside of our set in the middle of that connector right there. And you're going to need four of these uh, um, very useful pieces and these axle and blue pins just like assigned just like so. Stick them on like that and then on this round hole in the middle of that construction just stick the uh, exposed pin and that is how you build this section. These are the colors for the uh, Crimson Wave version. Really the only part that matters is this uh, this jumper plate and these uh, red and blue parts here. Everything else can kind of either be silver or gray. It's going to be under the armor, so it's not too noticeable. But yeah, those are the colors I used there. Moving on. Okay, finally for the uh, additional armor pieces and detailing for the torso, these are the parts you'll need. Obviously, it's pretty simple. They're just a uh, Metro torso here with a stud pin and a little uh, one by one smooth tile on the top of it. And then these little constructions here are mirrored. They're just two one by one plates on a one by two plate, a one by two tile on the top of that a round one preferably, and then a stud pin on the bottom of that with a one by, or yeah, a one long uh, silver washer piece, and then another one of these one by two curved uh, slope pieces. You'll need two of those for each Helrex, and there's no color differences on the, uh, the details there for either version. As well as this, for the final torso assembly, you're gonna need four, or sorry, two of these per Helrex, uh, two long axles with a uh, washer on the end. So now let's show you how to put them all together. All right, now go ahead and gather up all the pieces you've constructed before. Let's begin putting it together. It's a pretty simple construction. You basically just got to line up this whole Technic mess here with this uh, uh, stud pin on lined up with this uh, thin uh, lift arm right there. Snap that into place just like so. You might have to move these out of the way a little, but as you can see that basically just balances out right in the middle there. Then you'll flip this around, and then on these two exposed axles here, you'll just take these two hubs from the back armor piece and just stick that over the back, just like so. And it snaps in place nice and easy. Now on the front for her torso, or chest armor, uh, you're gonna take each of these constructions here and just lay them right about there on the uh, torso design. And then you're going to take one of the sides of the chest plate armor, stick that on the blue pin on the front, just like so, and it should fit nice and snug over the top of that. Very nice there. And then last, you'll just take one of these two long uh, axles and and the washer and stick that through the hole on the top there into this uh, this hole on the lift arm right there. So go ahead and do that for the other side. And that is how you build Helrix's torso. Obviously, you'll assemble the uh, Crimson Wave version the same way, and we'll go ahead and gather our waists that we uh, built before. And then on this ball joint right in the middle here, we'll just snap that onto there. This gap between the armor here is where this axle will go. So just make sure to line everything up just like that, and it fits together nice and snugly. You kinda also gotta push these up, like lined up with that hand connector there. Otherwise, they won't fit behind this piece. 
So snap that all together just like that. And that is Helrix's torso done. We'll go ahead and do this side as well. And there we go. Next we'll do the head. All right, now time for the head design. These are the parts you'll need. Just a quick note, if you're following the contest, this head design here is not actually under the consideration for the canonization appearance. So if you're not really a fan of this head design, which I don't really blame you for if you're not, because, I mean, it's a Hordika head. Uh, but remember that they are doing an art contest afterwards to actually decide the appearance of her mask. So you uh, don't really have to worry about that. So if you're, uh, if you're deciding to build this version after the contest has ended and uh, you want to use the whatever the canon depiction of her mask is for her head design instead, feel free to do that. Also another note, this uh, construction right here for her eyes is actually made using a rubber band and it's stretched around pretty tightly. Uh, it's not under too much stretch stress, but it is in there quite a, quite a ways. So I'm not gonna take that part apart to show you guys, but I will show you that it's pretty simple to just do it. All you gotta do is string a rubber band through a Borak guy like that and use a like an axle or a you know, pair of tweezers like I've got here. And then all you gotta do is just wrap it around a washer once you're done there. And then you can pretty easily assemble that after you've got both Borak eyes and both washers around that rubber band. So it's not too difficult. Um, but yeah, to start with the construction of the head, we'll just start with a dark blue hand connector, stick a four long axle through one side, and then on the other side of that, stick a uh, two long axle extender. Next, you'll take this con Technic construction here, I uh, just explained to you how to build, slide that down the axle and take two very useful pieces and attach them on either side just like so. Then cap off that axle there with a washer. Nice and simple. Okay, and then on the front of that you'll just take this Technic connector, a two long axle, and then this other Technic connector and a washer on the front to uh, form her like mouth or whatever you want to call it, her speaker. <laughs> And then you can just lay the whole Nokama, Nokama Hordika head over the top. Then uh, slide a four long axle in through that uh, axle hole. And then attach a washer on either side to keep it held in place. All right, and then finally on the axle on the inside of the Kina helmet, that just snaps in right over the back of the Hordika head. And that is how you build Helrix's head design for her Crimson Wave form. The only difference in the head design is the color of these very useful pieces on the side. Everything else is ex built exactly the same. So yeah. Moving on, next we'll do her fins. All right, now for the fins, these are these are the parts you'll need. Um, go ahead and start with this double, this construction here made out of a hand connector and the CCBS small bone here and a pass-through ball joint. Take a two long axle, stick that on one side, and then put these uh, pieces over the uh, axle of a. Um, Nuva, Nuva shoulder right there, and then slide it down just like so. Next up, we're going to set that down, and we're going to take this um, Makuta wing piece, and then we're going to slide this construct this Technic connector over the top here, line it up with the two pin holes, like so, and just stick those both in just like that. And on the top of that, on that little exposed hole there, we're going to put a uh, one by one uh, Lego stud with a uh, pinhole through the middle. We're going to stick a bar piece on just like that to improve the shaping of the wing a little bit there. And next we're just going to attach the axle onto the, uh, the hand connector, just like that. And we're going to mirror that design, just like that. And for the uh, Crimson Wave version, we'll just replace the dark blue or sorry, the Mata Blue and the Silver here with a gray and a dark red barb. Also, this uh, very useful piece will be a dark blue one as well. So, yep. Now, let's show you how to put, put her all together. All right, go ahead and gather up all your limbs and body parts and uh, also your pieces of the mock, and we'll start putting everything together. So, to start, let's just go ahead and snap the head on the top, just like that. Flip these shoulder armor pieces up, and then on the right arm... We'll stick that on just like that, and then the left arm on the other side. Snap those down just to um, snap those down to cover up the uh, the shoulders a little better. And on the inside of the skirt armor, we'll snap these uh, legs on. Leg. 
All right, just like that. And then on her back, flip those over and just with the uh, Nuva armor facing out that way, slide the uh, pass-through ball joint over the top and all the way down, just like that. That is how you build, how it works. Obviously, her Crimson Wave form is built exactly the same way, just with the different colored parts we've already assembled. Uh, the only difference between these two mocks are their shield designs, so we'll do those separately, but yeah, we'll do the weapons next. So starting with her mace, these are the parts you'll need. Um, let's go ahead and begin with the head of the mace. We'll uh, get one of these Nokama Hordiko weapons, and we're going to construct this out of these uh, barb pieces and these Technic connectors. Put a gray, too long, frictionless pin, and then we're going to put that through the center hole of this, this weapon here, and then match it on the other side with a, another piece facing the outside. And we're going to slide that up just about roughly so that those barbs are at the bottom there. And then next we're going to take this construction here using uh, this slicer foot piece, put two of these stud pins on the inside there, that's actually important to keep everything held together. Then a Technic connector and a three long pin, that's going to stick in the uh, little pinhole on the top of that, and then you're going to stick the one end of, the, um, of that frictionless uh, two long pin into the bottom of the uh, slicer foot piece and then slide that all the way down. As you see, the, uh, the studs on the stud pin like fit underneath the curve right here of this piece really well and it holds it nice in place, nice and sturdily in place. Then snap that, snap another one on the other side, snap it all together. That's how you make the head of her mace. Also, I've got these little dangly blade pieces on here for a bit of decoration, sort of to match the chains on her shield, which we'll show you later. And once you got that, you can set that down. That's the head of the mace done. Uh, next, you'll need a four long axle and a two long corrugated tube, a modded neck piece with a pin so it can connect to her hands, another four long axle and cor corrugated tube, an axle extender, and a Rakshi Gurek staff piece on the end to cap it off. And that is how you build uh, her mace. Her Crimson Waveform's mace is exactly the same, only instead of using uh, modded blue connectors, we'll just replace them all with silver ones all the way down so it matches her color scheme a little better. And moving on, we'll do the Leader of the Order version's shield. All right, now for her first shield design, these are the parts you'll need. Uh, obviously, we're just using a new Paru Mari shield piece here, um, but we're adding a bunch of that little extra stuff on here to make the connection to her arm possible. So go ahead and, of course, connect the shield together just like so. Uh, have two two long pins sticking out the back and one one and a half long, or two one and a half long pins sticking out the front. Just like that. Next we'll construct this like so. So we'll need two five long thin lift arm pieces using all pinholes, a stud pin and another one of these studs with a uh, pinhole going through and then we're gonna run a three long axle all the way through that so it's completely flush at the top and then we're gonna go ahead and flip this over and on the back right here we're gonna start by placing one of these um, angled Technic connections right here and then you're going to put another one right directly above that one facing the opposite direction. And then what you're going to do is you're going to line this up so this uh, axle goes into that uh, one and a half long pin on the outside and slide that down and have that connect to the two long axle right there. Get it all the way down and all the way flush and then do that again on the other side. Just like so. Get those in there. Alright, and then you'll flip the shield around and you'll see well, if they don't pop out when you're shoving them in, that the three long axles have disappeared into the uh, into these one and a half long pins here. Then what you're going to do is take two three long uh, Anika chain pieces, stick those on both of those exposed pins, and then move them out of the way a little bit. And then we're going to take these two little greebles using these chain pieces and the assigned pins. And I usually like to keep the gear piece on the bottom. We'll just snap that to that exposed. Uh, pinhole right there and the other one onto the top using the little Baraki eyepiece. That creates a nice little bit of extra detail on the shield there and that's all you need for that. Next we'll do her Crimson Wave version. Alright now for her Crimson Wave version shield these are the parts you'll need. Obviously you can probably tell this one's a bit more complex than the last one so bear with me here. Um, to start with we'll go ahead and take the two biggest parts these uh, Bionicle 2015 Tahu 
uh, fire sword pieces and we're gonna stick them together like they would on a surfboard. We're also gonna have these uh, attached to one and a half long pins, these little blade pieces once again. And on the back here we're gonna connect a thin lift arm with uh, the assigned greebles on the center hole just like that. Snap that over the end. We're gonna have to secure all this together of course so uh, on these half axles sticking at the top I just cover those up with some Borok eyes. Next you're gonna take this Technic construction here using these two Technic connectors and a two long pin. Stick that onto the inside of these uh, two axles right there. All right, and once you got that, you can set that down. Next, we're gonna build these two constructions using the angle four uh, Technic connectors here, a very useful piece, and uh, two long and a three long pin. And obviously, these wing pieces. Um, we're gonna need both of these, as well as this five long Anika chain piece and a pair of these washers. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna stick one end of the chain piece over that axle right there and stick a washer onto that, and then you're gonna push that down so that this axle kind of buffers halfway between the two. Actually, I wanna say you have gotta push this down a little bit too, just like that. So you got something like that. Then you're gonna do that again on the other side using the other chain piece. Make sure these are lined up so that, yeah, they can face, the, uh, face against each other without kinking the chain up too much. And we'll go ahead and do the same thing over here. Get roughly that positioning out of it. And then we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the surfboard back, flip it upside down, and then attach both of these uh, connectors to the inside of the, uh, the fire sword on the exposed axle. Do that again right here so that we have this loop of chain pieces underneath it. Uh, gonna try and unravel this a little bit more. Okay, I just unhooked the middle chain and connected them back together and that seemed to fix it. So if you have that trouble, just uh, go ahead and do that. Then you wanna try and push these in so that they're not overlaying the outside of the uh, lava board too much. And that's pretty much it. Uh, now for the connection to the rest of her, actually, let's go ahead and do this real quick. So we're gonna take these two extra blade pieces here, attach these to this bottom hole right here using a half of a stud pin like so. The reason we do that is so we can take these one by two curved slope pieces and snap those over the two studs just like so. And that actually holds those holds in pretty well, just like that. Okay, now for the connections to the arm, we're gonna need to construct it like this. So take this three long lift arm here and put a little one by one plate on the top, just like that. Stick that in the top two holes there. And then on the two holes of this Technic connector, we're gonna do the same thing with another one. Slide those all the way down. And then we're gonna flip that over. And then kind of how we did it before, we're gonna take these two uh, triangular Technic connectors right here, stick one on the bottom and one on the top. And as you can see, there's a gap in between here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna layer a five long thin lift arm underneath there. Take two more of those, put a stud pin and another one of these um, pass-through pin Lego studs. I, I have two like one long cut lightsaber rods in there just to hold those in better so that they don't pop out when you remove the shield from her arm over and over again. And then obviously we're just gonna connect those all together right in the center right there. On either side. And last but not least, I know you guys love it when I say that. We'll flip that over and attach a Kanohi crest onto this axle hole right here in the top. And that is how you build the Crimson Wave version of Helrix's shield. Finally, I'll show you how she can equip her weapons. For Helrix's Leader of the Order form, you can attach her mace to her hand just like so. We stick that in this uh, connector on the bottom of the hand just like so, and you can wrap her fingers around it. Or, alternatively, you can flip her over and on the center hole in the back of her back. In this hole in the center of her back, you can stick the two long pin and flip the step, flip the uh, mace upside down and stick that in just like so. Also, you, you can store the shield on her back as well by using these two axle holes on the side of her shield. Those stick and connect onto these axle holes there. So you can connect it like that. Or to connect the shield onto either of her arms, you just need to line up her arm like so and connect the uh, connect this stud to this stud right here and then this part of the uh, connector right here 
to this exposed stud right there. That's all you need to do to equip her shield. Her Crimson Waveform functions exactly the same way with the, with the mace, of course, but also with this uh, shield, it pretty much functions the exact same way. You got the same connection points here. We'll just connect it onto the stud and the uh, stud axle right there, just like before. Only this time you can also loop the uh, chain around her fingers, so it looks like she's holding on to it better. We'll just connect that right there real quick. Just like so. And that is that. And so guys, that is it. That is how you build Helrix. Both versions, Crimson Wave and Leader of the Order. If you liked the video, feel free to like the video, share, comment, subscribe, do whatever you need to do. Do whatever you feel like doing. If you'd like to build your own of this design of Helrix, feel free to do so with or without credit. I do not mind. Don't forget about the canonization poll down in the description below. I'll greatly appreciate anyone who decides to support my entry. I'd like to know which mock you guys would like to see a tutorial for next. If you uh, have any preferences, post them down below in the comments and I'll make sure to take a look at them. But yeah, that's been another How to Build and another Helrix video. So without further ado guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next How to Build. Hey everyone, the voting period for the Helrix canonization contest has begun. Please, go participate in the vote via the link in the description. It's completely free to make a TTV message boards account. Just be older than 13 and read the rules. Vote for whichever mock you like best, and please, consider my version of Helrix for your vote. Also, make sure to share the vote with as many Bionicle fans as you can. The more participation we get, the more widely accepted the results are going to be. Thank you for your consideration, and thanks for watching.